This is Liberated Love Notes, a podcast on Living Corporate Network hosted by yours truly, Brittany Janae, creator of Liberated Love Notes, critical self-reflections and affirmations for the culture. (laughs) Y'all already know Liberated Love Notes is your source for weekly doses of self-reflection, affirmation, and (laughs) reimagining for us by us. Y'all want to start off this week with a a passage from an essay that I have been re-reading. This essay is written by our ancestor, Audre Lorde, who I have referred to, remembered quite a bit on the podcast. The essay that I want to read from and is often heavily quoted, the passage I want to read is from the essay entitled, The Master's Tool. The Master's Tools Will Never Dismantle the Master's House. A little bit of context. And so this essay is Audre Lorde reflecting on a conference she was invited to, a conference on feminist discourse and research and she was pretty much like wait a minute how we having feminist research discourse gatherings and we not centering you know black women uh lesbians women who are from third world countries she was essentially like wait a minute how are we doing the work while Also, excluding folks who are most impacted by the systems we are seeking to disrupt. This essay calls attention to that. Want to read a read a passage that resonates with me and is aligned with the affirmation, the liberated love note. I'm going in this episode with. She shares here. What does it mean? When the tools of a racist patriarchy are used to examine the fruits of the same patriarchy. What does it mean when the tools of a racist patriarchy are used to examine the fruits of the same patriarchy? It means that only the most narrow perimeters of change are possible and allowable. She then goes on to say, those of us who stand outside the circle of this society's definition of acceptable women, those of us who have been forged in the crucibles of difference, those of us who are poor, who are lesbians, who are black, who are older, know that survival is not an academic skill. It is learning how to stand alone, unpopular, and sometimes reveled, and how to make common cause with those others identified as outside the structures in order to define and seek a world in which we can all flourish. It is learning how to take our differences and make them strengths. Remember when we talked about gifts, y'all? It is learning how to take our differences and make them strengths. For the master's tools will never dismantle the master's house. They may allow us to temporarily to beat him at his own game, but they will never enable us to bring about genuine change. And this fact is only threatening to those women who still define the master's house as their only source of support. I want to read that. For the master's tools will never dismantle the master's house. They may allow us temporarily to beat him at his own game, but they will never enable us to bring about genuine change. And this fact is only threatening to those women who still define the master's house as their only source of support. Mm, Something about this passage, again, 
an essay, an excerpt from Audre Lorde's, our ancestors, the master's tools will never dismantle the master's house. And it just makes me reflect on this truth, this truth that liberation will not, liberation cannot be realized. If we are reproducing the same conditions, if we are showing up in the same modes of being, if we are leveraging the tactics of white supremacy and colonialism, and how we create spaces for ourselves. Y'all was listening to this video on Instagram by Amber J. Phillips. Um, love, love, love her content. Amber Abundance, I believe, is, is her tag. And this week, or last week rather, she unpacked colorism. She unpacked colorism specifically in the context of a lot of the, yeah, yeah, I suppose mainstream discourse on the movie. Um, ah, uh, what is that movie? It escapes me. The, the the movie that is a black western. The harder they fall, the harder they fall. She's she was unpacking colorism. How. Stage coach Mary was portrayed and casted by Zaza Beats. Unpacking all the things. It's a beautiful form of, from my perspective, loving accountability. She calls black folks, but more specifically, lighter skinned black folks, lighter skinned black women. She calls us in and up to hold ourselves accountable to how we can end up causing harm if we're not mindful of how our proximity to whiteness, our proximity to whiteness just by way of our skin color can end up marginalizing, silencing, causing harm to darker skinned black women. It is absolutely an, uh, an accountable, a form of loving accountability that challenges us to think about the spaces we create, the narratives we perpetuate. She has this moment in the video where she says, you can't be claiming, and I'm like paraphrasing, but it's something along the lines of, you can't be claiming to do radical narratives, to do radical storytelling, and then use the same tactics as our oppressor. And when she said that, I thought about this passage, this essay by Audre Lorde. Like, what are we really doing? What are we really building if we are using the same tools and tactics as our oppressor? What are we really doing if in our own spaces we are perpetuating harm? and silencing the lived experiences of black women, more specifically dark-skinned black women. What are we really doing if in our own spaces we are elitist and not accessible to those who don't have, by dominant culture standards, formal education? Like, what are we really doing? What are we really building if our spaces are adopting problematic and harmful narratives about who is lovable? and who is beautiful and who is deserving of safety what are we really doing if we're only centering fair skin lighter skin women in our understanding of beauty what are we really doing if in our spaces we are perpetuating fat phobia buying into the lie that some black bodies are more worthy than others what are we really building if in our spaces we are dehumanizing black trans women, black trans folks, and prioritizing our comfort as black cisgender folks and our entertainment over their lives, their pain, their humanity? Like what are we really what are we really doing if we if we leave corporate America, y'all? and build our own institutions, 
but are adapting the same ways of working and hoarding power and exploiting those at the proverbial bottom for personal gain and wealth. Or even worse, if we're adopting this same sort of like paternalistic, oh, now that I have arrived, I got to save those black folks over there rather than building with centering their needs, their realities, their humanity, or even worse, (laughs) if, if we arrive and we gain and then distance ourselves from community, from blackness, because We see ourselves as respectable. Mm. What are we really gaining and building if in our spaces we are pushing the same lie, (laughs) the same fraud of professionalism, the lie of assimilation, this lie of needing to play the game Without equal tension to examining the cost, and when I talk about cost, the cost of losing or forgetting oneself. What are we really doing if in the name of mentoring and lifting as we climb, we're creating young minds to be more complicit in system versus disruptive of it? Y'all, I'm just thinking about my alma mater, our university often referred to as the Mecca, an historical hub of activism and change, and today, Tent City, as students resist and protest, calling for uh, fair, livable housing. And to experience the powers that be, seek to silence, seek to control, seek to muffle, be irresponsive, and in some ways dehumanize the voices of the people, the students. Mm. What happens when even in our own spaces, We are using the master's tools, y'all. I just feel like we, I just feel like we deserve better. We deserve better. There is a uh, liberatory healer, community leader, mental health practitioner, Shauna Mary Brown here in the Baltimore area. And she says, Freedom is individual. Liberation is collective. And I'm just saying, what are we really building? Are we really building if we're using the master's tools? I got two liberated love notes to leave y'all with. uh, a, a, A form of loving accountability. As you kick off your week, as you occupy your space, those spaces that you're a part of, as you build your own, I got two liberated love notes for you. This first one here, my blackness does not make me immune to the influence of white supremacy. Mm, Yeah, my blackness does not make me immune to the influence of white supremacy. Today, I challenge myself this week, I challenge myself to pause and interrogate how I internalize this toxic disease. Not if, but how. I want you to carve out out time to pause, reflect, get real curious about how you are complicit in and have internalized some of these ways and modes of being. I also want to lift up and affirm that we will not. (laughs) We will not fall into the trap of erasing or disregarding Black people who identify differently from us. I will not fall into the trap of erasing or disregarding Black people 
who identify differently from me. Black men, black women, black trans people, black queer people, black people with disabilities, black immigrants, black people who are and have been incarcerated, and black people at various intersections all matter. They all matter to my work, to our work and liberation. Y'all, if we gonna build, we ain't gonna be using the master's tools. If we gonna build, we gonna reimagine anew. Cause as you well know, we deserve. We deserve. Peace, y'all.